My name is Tammy Fott and I'm a dialysis travel RN and I've been traveling with Atlas for just over a year. Um, I have been traveling in total for about two and a half years. So we have two rescues. This is Lulu and she's the baby. She doesn't like anybody but mommy and daddy. Lulu, say hi. Such a good baby. And then we've got mama. This is Lovey. And she loves everybody. Especially mom. I'll let you say hi. And then Tiggerbell. Hey, meow. Say hi. hi. See, this is her table and she wants to know why I'm on it. <laughs> well, I think that traveling can be very, very lonely and isolating. Um, and I'm fortunate enough that my husband retired so that he could travel with me. And it only made sense then to bring our animals because that's our family. Hi. Well, we travel in an RV and um, so that gives us hi. a lot more freedom. We don't have to look for um, pet friendly housing. Most of the RV parks that we find, um, most RV travelers have pets and lots of them, which is kind of odd. Um, challenges sometimes, you know, if we want to be gone for a longer day or go overnight, um, you know, we would have to find daycare for them. But there are a lot of resources out there right now for um, pet owners who travel. An example is Rover. Um, it's very much like care.com in that you can interview people and hire someone to come and take your pets out. Um, we utilize Petco for our grooming, so they just keep all of our records on file, so that makes it easy when we have to make an appointment to get in and get out. Well, I think just having unconditional love with you is very comforting at any time. Definitely travel nursing is challenging, so even if you didn't have the RV and the husband, it's very comforting and um, it gives you something to focus on other than the hard, part of nursing um, and especially right now with the pandemic um, we're being pulled in many different directions and facing different challenges every day so just having that comfort is wonderful so we just have a file that we keep with all of our immunizations um, and all of our visits now when we were in uh, southern Texas we did have a problem with allergies which actually affected um, their poop schedule, which is, you know, you don't want to mess up your dog's poop schedule. So um, we keep a record and then we also have um, an account with Chewy so that we can get any medications through there. And I, I always keep um, information on my vet back home and any vets they visited. And I just keep it readily available in a file so that if there's any question of anybody who's trying to help us care for our pet, then there's resources there to get it called and answered right away. Uh, when we were in um, Laredo, Texas, uh, there wasn't a lot of RV parks to choose from. And so we were kind of in this dirt field um, with several other transient workers. Um, we do have a portable fence that we put up for safety for our dogs so they don't have to be on the, the chain all the time. Um, but there was, we had a neighbor dog in that RV park and his name was Jeffrey. And Jeffrey was a Bichon. He had long legs and white curly fur. And my little, my little Lulu who hates everybody would run to the, when we'd open up the door, she'd run to the gate and stare at Jeffrey's um, camper until his little mommy would let him out. And then he would come over and come in the fence and play. So they're making friends as we travel too, which is really nice. And Jeffrey was kind of a weirdo. He wore boots and pajamas and coats and <laughs> he was fun. Um, organization is key. Make sure that where you're going to, you have a place to stay that is pet friendly for sure and safe for your pets. Um, and also make sure that you have backup in case something happens to you where you can't make it home or you know to let the animal out um you know so set it up even if you don't think you're going to use that rover account that person meet somebody have a, a travel buddy or someone where you're working that can check into your um in on your pets if need be mm -hmm.